What is up everyone? My name is Louis and it's my mission to aid your awakening. Today's video, I'm going to talk about three ways in which you're probably not dealing with your emotions correctly. I'm going to talk about the best way for spiritual advancement, for spiritual growth, for developing yourself, moving past negative emotional experiences and moving on to a new higher state of consciousness and in order to raise your vibration and live out a better, more joyful and a peaceful way of living. I'm going to discuss, I'm going to break down and go into the three ways, the three most common ways people fail to properly deal with their emotions, their negative emotions, and this leads to them being so held back in life, being unhealthy, aging, dying, even dying prematurely, having emotional blockages. These are the three ways our society really enforces this sort of behavior. Our society wants people to deal with their emotions in these negative ways, but there is a way and it is surrendering, releasing, letting go. I've got these ideas from David R. Hawkins' book, Letting Go. It's one of the most profound spiritual books I've ever read, and I'm currently only a third of the way through, but I've been so inspired by what I've read so far that I have to share this with you because you are going through an experience which brings up lots and invokes lots of negative emotional states. And if you don't know how to deal with these properly, you may fall into one of these three negative, these three bad ways of dealing with them which I'm about to get into. You ready? Let's get into it. Previously in my life, as I imagine you have all at some point been guilty and culpable of doing these three mechanisms of dealing with negative emotions. These are all faulty and ineffective methods, according to David R. Hawkins, excuse me. <clears throat> and the first of them is suppression, very common, suppression and repression. Repression is when we unconsciously try not to experience, push down, trying to not experience an emotion. We're pushing it down unconsciously. Suppression is where we consciously push it down. We decide not to experience it. We decide we don't want to feel this way and we push it down. We don't allow it to arise. We don't allow ourselves, we cut ourselves off from identifying and experiencing that emotion. Now this is many, many negative consequences. And why we do this is often not from our fault. It's because of how we've been raised, social conditioning. It's from social custom. Maybe in some societies, some cultures, it's just seen as disadvantages at all to experience any sort of emotion and try and be emotionless as possible. Social custom. Also family parentage. Maybe you're raised and you had a father who told you never to be emotional, never to cry, that is unmanlike to cry. And as a result, you then suppress the emotion of sadness. When actually, if you were to cry, it would be released and would be away out of your space, out of your inner awareness, away from your inner state, not affecting your inner state. Maybe you're told, maybe even you suppress good emotions. You're forced not to laugh, not to find things funny because you're seen as maybe childlike or immature to be laughing at things. This is actually a weird one, but this is what I found out when I started waking up. I'd, I'd go into meditation and I'd obviously release negative emotions. You know, sometimes it would bring up an emotion, it would rise up to my throat and I'd end up crying. Other times, you know, I'd, I'd feel this overwhelm of sadness, but eventually I learned to, that resistance would only make it stronger. If I were to allow it to be there, you know, I'm going through a process of releasing it much more quickly. You're allowing it much more easy to be out of your not effect and come into your life anymore. But also you get that, with, I would start laughing sometimes. Sometimes I'd laugh and I'd realize that, say for example, in school, I would find a lot of things funny, but I'd repress it, I'd suppress it because I didn't want, you know, to be caught out laughing. I didn't want to be found out laughing. I would be, I would have been, got in trouble for finding things funny. Again, trouble maybe for laughing at other people when I felt it was rude for me to be laughing at that point. And it's interesting, you can experience really good emotions as well as you go into release, once you start to allow these emotions to emerge, you become aware of what you previously suppressed. But suppression and repression has also much more negative consequences on wider society as we see it. And this is seen through projection. 
the negative experience, the negative emotions that we have pushed down, such as anger, rage, that you know we don't want to face, we don't want to experience, and let up discontent. Just gen general discontent. This is targeted by a lot of politicians. They want to grab onto people's. They want. To, they target people's general discontent with the world, and that's why they say in every single election, every single time, it's they're out campaigning. It's do you, you've suffered, you've suffered, you've suffered. This isn't good. It needs to get better. It needs to get better. Any politician anywhere in the world will say it needs to get better. We need to work on this. This needs to be taken down or got rid of, or this person needs to be removed. It's targeting people's general discontent. And people project this onto the world in all kinds of different ways in terms of the suppressed and repressed emotions. They target into wars. You see the other, you take part in othering. You see them as different, them as your, the projection of your emotions, which you should be independently responsible and handling. They're responsible for all of it. It accounts, it accounts for all strife and division within societies. We do it with what the idea of God and maybe the devil. We do it with people we don't like. We do it with people that we see as opposite on the political spectrum, in the religious perspective, people of a different race or gender. You project your negative experiences onto that person and in their mind, you believe they are accountable for that, as opposed to you having these emotions within yourself, recognizing that they are merely emotions and they can be released. People grab onto them and believe that aspect of themselves, which is hurting. Someone else or something else is to blame. This has a very negative consequence on society. And suppression and repression needs to be let up and released if we want to transfer into a better society, more harmonious society. This is very important that people do this type of work. And if you're doing it, props to you. A second one, interestingly enough, is expression. And David R. Hawkins talks about how there's been some, some confusion and some it's been slightly misconstrued, this talk about expression and the correct way to express the negative emotion. A lot of people think if they're angry and they recognize their anger, but they exert it and they express the anger, then the anger goes away. Actually, that's, it doesn't quite work that way. With expression, the feeling is vented, verbalized, expressed out, acted out. He talks about how when you express, you aren't actually freed of that emotion. It actually gives the emotion greater energy. In a violent process, you can see this. People maybe arrive at the process with this anger of being what's happening, and because of everyone expressing it, it actually gets way worse. It can go out of hand and get really, really violent and chaotic because everyone's coming together. And because they're expressing it, it rises within them the anger, the hatred, the discontent, whatever it could be. There's some great causes and some reasons to truly be angry, but the expression of the anger is not always a good thing. Instead of expressing it, we should find ways to neutralize it, neutralize the emotion and channel it into positive ways, channel it into socializing. This is what, if a man, say for example, we have nowadays a mental health crisis, people don't talk about their emotions. This is the difference between discussing your emotions being vulnerable and discussing your emotions and just completely acting out the negative emotions, expressing the negative emotions. If you're shouting at someone, you're, you're gonna, that's like an emotional attack on someone else. You don't need to emotionally attack someone else because you're experiencing that emotion, but you can neutralize it, be open, be honest about it, discuss it. That is what needs to take place. That can allow things to be healed. Just the direct acts, expressing and acting out of that emotion isn't a good thing. If you're de and if you're depending on that, it's not a very, it's a faulty mechanism for dealing with that emotion. So number three, guys, finally, the other faulty mechanism, and this is again very common and seen without throughout society, slightly similar to suppression and repression, but it isn't quite directly the attempt to repress it down. It is simply escape. Escapism is seen everywhere. The alcohol industry thrives on it. Commercial industry thrives on it. Anything any sort of consumerist, they depend on people. People even call shopping therapy because it is a way for them to escape their emotions and divert them so their activities, focusing on something else, smoking cigarettes, eating unhealthy food, overeating, doing my, many, many frantic mindless activities 
endless socializing, endless conversing, endless texting, playing video games. These are all forms of escape. And the reason we like them so much is because they help us escape from being in touch with ourselves and instead putting our focus elsewhere and not on the pressing negative emotion, that build up of pressure. People, instead of dealing with it and relieving the pressure by letting go and surrendering to the emotion, instead focus on doing frantic activities to keep their mind busy. I do, that, I do this a lot and I'm, I'm culpable of this a lot as well. When instead of I have my own self work, work to do, I can project that feeling in terms of um, ignoring it and focusing on other things like now I'm on social media, now I'm putting myself out on the internet, I can check figures, I can check stats, I can check messages, many messages from other people. When I should be focusing on myself, because the more I focus on myself, the more that will manifest out and give me better content to share with you guys. So there is a balance I need to strike with that. But I notice, take for example, you can test it right now. When you come into a room, it's the first thing you do, put music on, put the TV on. You know, I love music, I listen to music all the time. And that is a tiny form of escape, it's, but there are far, far worse forms. Do you need to drink every time you get away from work, when you're finished with work? Do you need to have a drink? Do you need to smoke? Because it takes up some time. Because A lot of people say they're bored, and that's the reason they dive into negative habits. But there's often an underlying, a very subtle refrigerator harm like of anxiety and a negative emotion that needs to be released and let go. So there you have it guys, these are three ways in which are faulty and bad mechanisms for dealing with your negative emotions. How you should deal with it, I'm gonna put, bring out a much, a, a longer video where I really go into the details of how to release and let go, but it is really surrendering, releasing that inner pressure, that inner build up of negative emotion within your body. And how do you release it? So you relax your muscles, you allow it to be there. You say to yourself, it's okay, I can experience this, I can experience this. And you notice in your body maybe where there's pain, where there's a feeling of slight sorrow and uncomfortability. And you simply sit with it and you surrender to it. You say, you have the power, you are allowed to be here. Instead of fighting it and putting up resistance, you're laying down your arms, the war, you're, you've decided to end the conflict, the battle with that negative emotion. And you're simply relaxing giving it a place to be there. Once we surrender and let go, we experience a lot of decompression. That accumulated pressure goes away. The body gets to experience more inner freedom and as a result, you become more healthy. The bodily functions far more effectively and efficiently. Our, moons, our immune system improves and our health gets better. Our skin gets better. The color in our skin gets better. There are so, so many reasons. And this is one huge part of waking up is knowing, finding a different way to surrender, activate your release muscles and let go of these negative emotions so that you can feel your state ascend. And each time it ascends, you will face a new lot of resistance that you must deal with. But overall, you are on an upward trajectory. Things are going well. And once we learn to use, surrender, release, let, letting go as the main form of dealing with our negative emotions. Things are looking good. We will get blessings, blessings, blessings. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember to check out Facebook group Awakening Aid community down below and uh, follow me on Instagram It'd be cool as well if you want to message me go ahead I've got coaching coming up soon so you message about that in the details but yeah I'm uh, gonna start doing more videos outside now found some good locations where I live in London and uh, got much more content on the way thank you very much for watching guys I'm gonna discuss I'm, I've got way more about this book I'm gonna talk about and I will share a lot more videos about letting go and how you can do that in a bit more detail very soon thank you for watching guys for that Peace and love. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.